Hey everyone, this is Zephyr with the Bailiwiki channel, where we teach everyday DMs how to create truly amazing experiences for their players by combining art and technology. Today, we wanted to talk about mini maps or town maps. They're super useful for being able to understand how multiple scenes fit together in a greater context, like this map of the town here. This is one of our older maps, and we created this using Dungeon Draft and having all of these different roofs as individual objects. But now there is a significantly easier way to do that using Ripper's Media Optimizer module that's a part of his suite of paid Patreon modules. And using that, I was able to create this new town map for these desert settlements in just about half an hour, and it's a really great result using some extra tiles in Media Optimizer. So it's super simple, and you get Media Optimizer as a part of Ripper's Patreon module pack. If you're not already supporting Ripper, definitely consider it. He puts out a ton of great content, both free and paid. And not only do you support his work, you get access to some really cool toys like this one as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in to creating a mini map using Media Optimizer and some extra tiles from the BaileyWiki suite of modules. So for this example, we're going to use the Desert Settlement Maps 1 through 5 from our latest BaileyWiki Maps Premium Towns release. All of these are really great for a desert urban setting, and they work well together, so they're going to make a great mini map for us. As you can see, we've got all these different platforms that will work really nicely to be able to just drop onto a background for us. First, we need to do some prep work, and that's gonna be deleting all of these map notes. I don't personally need these on the scenes, but you could re-import afterwards. The reason we're doing this is because all of these Monk's Active Tile Trigger tiles will show up when we flatten these tiles together. So I'm gonna delete all the map notes, and I'm also gonna delete this little control that controls the ambiance. Again, when it comes to using the actual scene, you can re-import these with the Monk's Active Tile Triggers functions intact, or you can delete these afterwards. Then we're gonna delete this black square background so that it doesn't get pulled in as well. Now that we've only got the tiles that make up this area, we're gonna use the Media Optimizer Tile Combiner. Here, we're gonna to wanna to set our combine mode to all tiles because we want this to just be a nice chunk that we can see. We're not gonna include the background, and I've already set up this folder path for Tile Combiner and Desert City, and then we're gonna name this something descriptive. For example, the name of the scene is the 01 City Promenade, so I'm gonna leave it like that. And for this use case, I'm not going to actually combine the tiles, so I'm not gonna check that delete. We'll go ahead and confirm, and I'm just combining them because I'm not going to delete any of the old tiles. I don't need to make a backup of this scene. So we're just gonna let it do its thing. We'll see there's one big combined tile here, which we can go ahead and delete off of our original scene. And I've got a blank scene set up here for testing, already pointed to my folder, where I can drag these out and just double check that these work how I want. Increasing my asset grid size will make this smaller so I can see it on the map. You have this beautiful little snapshot of that scene that has all the transparency intact and it's really easy to look at and use in a map context. Just one more time, this is the map two. And again, we're gonna leave it in all tiles mode, name it market square combine, and we don't need to worry about making a backup for this, otherwise we'd have an extra scene. And when it finishes, I'm gonna delete that extra tile and go back to my blank to compare it. And you can see when I drag this out that even though this map was at night, it doesn't bring in any of that lighting or the background. So depending upon your use case, you might find that a detriment, but for us here, it's really nice to not have to worry about the lighting of the different scenes or having to change that. It just comes in beautifully and transparent. All right, now I'm gonna repeat this process for the rest of my scenes and we'll have all of these cutouts. One quick note here is that on these scenes, you'll see the grid size is 100. That's gonna be the DPI that Tile Combiner sets these up. So just as a demonstration, as a grid size is 100, I pull this out and you can see they line up just fine. And so that's how you can keep track of the ratio. You'll notice if you open up the tile, that it's got kind of a weird height or width to it. And that's just because these extra tiles extend out in odd directions of how they get clipped in. So then now we're gonna make our new scene, which is going to be the actual desert city map. When you create this, you can change the grid size, etc. I prefer that 40 by 30 grid units. You'll also want to go ahead and under the lighting side, alter your token vision and global illumination settings accordingly. Token vision means that people don't have to have tokens on there if it's unchecked. If it is checked, they do, and global illumination allows them to see everything. 
So now that we've got our city map, let's go ahead and drag out all of our tiles. And you can set these to different things. If we do 500, then these are going to be one fifth of their original size. This looks a little small for me. I'm gonna to have to add a lot of extra content to fill in the blank space. Let's try 300. And that's gonna be maybe a little too crowded. They're going to interlock too much for my liking. So I'm gonna go in the middle with 400. And this seems about right. So I get all of my tiles on here and I like to have all of these tiles out before I start arranging them. And I'm going to then make a background. And when it comes to backgrounds, there's a couple options. My preferred method is to use in the BailiWiki nuts and bolts macros. We've got some free overlays here. And then in the terrain overlays, we have a desert option and I'm gonna drag that to my hotbar. And I'm gonna use that to take a tile and turn it into my terrain. So I'm gonna actually use this place tile or create tile tool to draw out the shape of my entire map. And I just need to pick a solid background. So I'm going into the town's active tiles folder and I'm gonna grab this black PNG that I know exists. And you can use any opaque tile, it's just important that's opaque and you'll need to send this to the background so that it doesn't sit over top of our different pieces. I'm just gonna run this macro until I find a background that I like. You can see there's a lot of variety in here. So just go until you find something that fits what you're going for. And I'm pretty okay with these dunes. And now it's time to actually arrange all of our tiles into a way that makes sense to us. And what's really nice about this is in the context of how we're going to lay these out, you can just think of this map as actually having the true north and south of how these maps are oriented. But within the maps themselves, maybe they're not actually oriented north and south. So you've got the freedom to rotate things or move things around as you see fit. And I wanna keep that central market kind of central since that is the center piece there and it's in the name. I'm just trying to get a rough position here and a rough idea of how these are going to fit together. It's totally fine to adjust these as I go. And once I'm pretty happy with their general configuration, that's when I'm gonna go into my tiles and I'm gonna pick some extras. All of these are going to be found under the uh, towns, maps, and then wilderness section in different subfolders. So you can check that out for all of the different tiles. There are way too many to list here. So I'm just gonna go through this pretty quickly. I wanna add a river so that we actually have the crossing for the canal works on this central piece of the crossing. And it also helps explain why there's all this lush vegetation at all of these different points. This is kind of an oasis town or a town along a river here. And you can see I'm not afraid to make adjustments to where all of these different maps interact with each other. You know, that's the beauty of building this in Foundry with all these different tiles is we have the freedom to move things around at will until we get a effect that we like. Now I'm going in and I'm adding some paths and roads to connect these different pieces. Obviously this would work perfectly well without these roads or with even without the river in order to demonstrate where these maps are in relation to each other. But I wanna give a feeling of connectivity and this really helps to sell the idea of your map. You can see that people aren't just trekking across the sand and the dunes to get to the different parts of the city. This is a truly interconnected piece of civilization. And I also add the road that leads out of town because presumably this town isn't just in the middle of nowhere where you are going to have to trek through the whole desert. There is some kind of path, whether that's just well-trodden areas of the dunes that people use to get there, or there's an actual road that people manage to maintain in all of this. And you can see me showing off a few different tricks throughout this. You can change the aspect ratios of different pieces to make them work better. And you can go into the tile configuration and make one of the values negative on the width or the height in order to mirror it respectively. Now they've got all the paths in place. This is perhaps a little extra, but you can see that on some of these maps, they weren't designed originally with roofs in mind. And so now we're gonna go in and add roofs to our mini map. These particular roofs can be found inside of the towns module and then inside of town square and class two and then under the class two roofs. Not all of these fit these particular rooms perfectly, but that's okay, I don't really need them to. This is just an approximation. Again, this is a really zoomed out view that people are going to be looking at to get an idea of how this town is laid out and how it's connected. Really don't stress yourself out about making things look exactly like the original scenes or making them look perfect. Just having this idea of what buildings are where and what sections of town are where 
is going to do a lot for your players. And most players aren't going to hyper analyze every single map. So do enough that you're happy with it, but don't stress yourself out about it. The idea here is to make things easy for yourself when creating your map. Now, this would be perfectly serviceable, but we can also add some extra style by adding additional tiles. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some different vegetation. And again, these are in the towns folder and under the wilderness section if you want to use these exact assets. So adding some cacti along the outskirts of town and further away from the river and some mesas to add some other visual interest. And just generally adding a bit more life and space to the areas of the map that we don't have buildings in. This is a great way to really sell the map a little bit more. It makes everything feel like this city or settlement is actually been here. You know, it doesn't really make sense for there to be all this vegetation on these actual city maps, and then there not be additional vegetation or bits of wilderness terrain around the area. Again, obviously, you could use this as a simplified map without adding these extra tiles, but this really helps add a bit of extra style and flair, particularly if your players are going to spend a lot of time in this town and are going to be referencing this map a lot. It's worth putting a little bit of extra effort in. Then I'm adding some additional vegetation to, again, give the idea that the river has a lot of lush growth around it. And this is a great place to start with all of the tiles. And we can go the extra mile here if we want this map to work at night. We can add some additional lights, and that's going to really help make things pop. And so I'm just going to add some general torch glows here. And when I am done setting them all up, I am going to set a darkness activation range on it so that it only works at certain times of the day. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and copy this light, and I'm going to add it in a few other places around town. One thing that you'll notice is I'm not using these particular lights to cover everything in town. They're just in a few strategic locations. And the reason why we're going to do that is because it really helps with these more macro level maps to have some variety in your lighting. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to make another version that has a slightly different coloration, not too drastically different. And then it's also going to have a different darkness activation range. If you use something like Simple Calendar with some extra plugins in order to automatically change day and night and have some dynamics to it, then this will really help sell that. And these are going to be kind of the house lights. And so I'm putting them on the buildings that don't already have one of the bigger and brighter lights that turn on earlier in the day. And it's a simple matter of copying and pasting into the places that you want the lights to be in. And we can turn the lights off here to get a better view with the scene lighting here. And it looks pretty good. And the final touch I want to do is I want to add some clouds to this with FX master and you know being in a desert the clouds are not going to be as dense so I'm going to go ahead and set them to have a slightly lower density and that's going to again sell the idea that we're in a desert there are clouds which gives a bit of life and feel to the map without being too overbearing since we've got that lower density if you want to you could also set up additional settings for maybe there's a sandstorm going on by repurposing the snowstorm option or something with the fog etc and it takes a little bit for the clouds to appear, and then I'm going to decide to make additional tweaks. For example, maybe I want the direction to be from west to east, etc. And we can go ahead and turn the sunshine back on to get a better view of the weather with our map. We can see those new clouds popping in. And if I wanted to be really particular about this, maybe I would customize this further, or again, if I'm using something like Simple Calendar or with a weather plugin, et cetera, then it could manage that for me and I wouldn't have to worry about it. But there we go, a really gorgeous map done in about half an hour. All right, and that's going to conclude our tutorial on using Media Optimizer's tile combiner feature and some extra tiles to create some really gorgeous mini maps and settlement maps for your games. As I mentioned earlier, this took me about half an hour of real time. Your mileage may vary, but either way, this is a lot faster than building this from scratch in another mapping tool like Dungeon Draft, and it looks a lot better than using some really rough approximations of where these different maps interconnect. I hope that this has given you some extra tools to put in your DM arsenal for prepping your games. Once again, this has been Zephyr with the BailiWiki channel. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to keep up with all of our latest content, and consider becoming a patron. Not only do you support the channel, you also gain access to all the modular systems and scenes that we've ever made, including all of these great desert settlement maps that we've just released. This is Zephyr signing off. Thanks so much for watching, happy gaming, and have a good one.